Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Wednesday, June 14th, 2017, and I'd like to share with you an array of cells, a battery of cells, if you will, that I have constructed today on the iron EDTA chemistry that we've been talking about for a long time. For new viewers, the notion is that if we want to construct a really cheap at-home battery setup to store energy for whatever reason, or just to learn about how batteries work, then we need something that is going to be inexpensive, non-toxic, and made of chemicals we could assemble at home. And iron is a good choice for that. Iron is cheap, non-toxic, and can be assembled at home, not air sensitive or anything crazy like that. So. How do you make an all iron battery? You need some iron metal to be oxidized and you need some highly oxidized iron to be reduced. So iron 3 EDTA is a good choice because it's soluble, it's inexpensive, and it more or less sits where you tell it to. The way we construct this cell is we put some iron EDTA mixed with graphite in the bottom of this 50 milliliter conical tube and then add a little paper spacer to keep everything more or less level while we pour in some hot EDTA bearing agarose. That then freezes in place and makes a little uh, hydrogel plug to allow ions to pass through but to restrict electric current. That's really important for a battery because batteries need to have two sides, one of which gives up electrons, one of which takes up electrons, and you want those electrons to go through your load, not through the middle of the battery. Agarose just happens to work pretty well and again purchased inexpensively and cheaply from Amazon. On the top we put our iron metal and pour some EDTA over the top and it's ready to roll. I constructed five of these batteries this morning, it took me about an hour, and arrayed them in series and I had about two volts which was sufficient to light up this LED about which I am just really excited. I don't know that I've ever been more excited to just see a little green glowing LED at that point, I hooked it up to a potentiometer and a ammeter, and we're just going to watch the decay over the course of the day as it slowly uses up the energy in there so we can get an estimate. And then, if it happens by the end of today that we run out of electricity, we'll recharge it and just see uh, how well that, that works. Anyway, stay tuned tomorrow. I'll let you know how that works, and we'll start talking about some other electrochemical projects. If you like science, chemistry, electrochemistry, batteries, DIY technology, tune back into the Allen Lab. We update Monday through Friday.